If Sullivan's work teaches us anything, it's that there was a close connection between the t being taken advantage of in such a way as to have a weakness exposed that is a reflection or result of the dissociated state and that also failure to react to rebuff has a very very significant part to play in this and I intend to uh, prop up this apparent truism with the following story so those of you who can understand the dissociated state being made manifest in humiliation and weakness who can understand the substitute processes that are used to hide the soul's awareness of this dissociated state now add to your stew of understanding the failure to react to rebuff in this group of people who are just kind of breaking into the hippie scene you know this girl who maybe was smoking pot for the first time looks at me and goes you're weird And I was about to talk about how she reminded me of my Aunt Dora in Bensonhurst because we always had to sit on these plastic cushions. And instead of going with that, I allowed those words, you're weird, to just permeate my brain. And I had a little vision or imagination of this mandala-like shape coming out of me just let it disintegrate and if anyone has ever experienced the tremendous uh, rush acceleration of DMT when you leave your ego and go out to where the soul meets paradise you'll have some conception of this mandala kind of uh, energy that just dissipated from me and suddenly all I knew was I was in a panic she had said something to me but I couldn't grasp what the situation was. I was in a different dimension of incredible anxiety that I had been humiliated and pierced and everybody was waiting for me to do something and say something and I didn't know what it was I could say or do and then the dream state really kicked in. These people around me who used to look up to me said, it's okay, man. And you know, they saw my face in a panic and they went, it's all right, man. And that only furthered my humiliation. Anyway, I went right into that kind of paranoia that every time anyone said anything to someone else, they were speaking symbolically about what was going on in my head in reference to this horrible catastrophe of my humiliation at the hands of this pudgy little middle-class girl. It's worthwhile at this point to see what Sullivan has to say about this dream state merely, merely I say, if for no other reason, to show that there is credibility here. Uh, this is page 97 in Peculiarity of Thought within the uh, book Schizophrenia as a Human Process. He's talking about when social situations of pressure prove too much on very often young people. He talks about the delusions that crash in and he goes on to say, along with this, the interrelation being still to be discovered, there are more or less obvious alterations in consciousness. People feel like, um, will often say, I felt like I was living in a dream. Things look different from then on. I was never quite the same after that. Okay, um, more or less obvious alterations in consciousness such that the state of the patient's awareness of both external and internal events changes from that scene when one is fully awake and closely attentive towards types suggested by the state of one just awakening from a nightmare when the internal symbol situations dominate the perceptions of all reality which are terribly distorted into a diminishing approximation to the figures of the dream. I think we've all experienced at least once you're in a very vivid nightmare or, or dream and you're coming out of it into waking up, into waking consciousness.
and your understanding and submergence into the dream is so complete that as you start to come into consciousness, the symbols in the dreams that make perfect sense when you're asleep are now beginning to be impressed on your waking consciousness and there's a horrible diminishing of those dream symbolisms as you emerge into waking consciousness and quite a lot of confusion even if it's for only half a second where the dream symbolism is impressed on your greater on your waking consciousness which is growing greater than the dream symbolism well at that point this is a schizophrenic uh, dream state while one is awake. Individuals come to a certain age with implicit assumptions about themselves and the universe. A great body of assumptions is the foundation upon which our life processes rest. In a remarkable number of young people, however, there comes a time when their faith in this background of implicit assumptions about their own abilities or about the consistency of the universe and so on is abruptly shattered. Then, instead of building the rationalizations as we do when someone points out we have made an ass out of ourselves, these individuals go on feeling terribly upset about things. From that time on, instead of building the rationalizations with which we heal the wounds to our self-respect and all that sort of thing, these people are different from what they were before. One finds that the individual who has had a schizophrenic illness has not, in the first place, developed the abrupt manifestations of hereditarily determined deterioration in the life processes. Instead, he has stood in a significantly and distinctly difficult position in the social situation in which he has lived. He has come upon certain situations which were most serious in their negative effect upon his self-esteem. And after encountering these situations, which include as significant factors only other people, after perhaps a rebuff to his self-assertion, he has shown a significant and characterizable failure to react by any of the methods of reacting to rebuff which are more or less well known to all of us from our personal experience. We find that the stricken individual following the failure to react to rebuff has lost a great deal of that confidence in the integrity of the universe, the goodness of God and so on, which is our common human heritage from infancy, and that from thence onwards he goes on feeling decidedly uncertain about life. Apparently, if one is sufficiently uncertain about life, one loses the cognitive assets which serve us in distinguishing products of autistic or purely subjective reverie from products which include important factors residing in so-called external reality. And when one has lost this ability to distinguish between such reveries and such objects having more external points of reference, one begins to sink into mental processes significantly like those we experience when we are asleep. With the appearance of a partition in which considerable waking time is spent in a condition in which one is without the ability to tell what has true, genuine, and consensually acceptable external references, and what instead is purely personal fantasy, there appears a peculiar disorder of social activity, and I might say even of non-social activity, and it is these peculiarities that seem to constitute the essence of schizophrenic behavior.